All right, check this out. I got an Anchor power strip, and this one has more outlets than I had on my existing power strip. That was the main reason to get it, but I also got one with the USB charger, and this one is incidentally a surge protector, and I thought it'd be fun to take it apart and see what's going on in there. And part of the reason for taking it apart is that it really, to me, looks like there's a lot of wasted space here. We have uh, 12 outlets total, and there's a huge forehead up here, and then this huge USB charging chin. So I would hope, looking at this, that there's something um, useful going on inside there, but I suspect there's a lot of empty space as well. It feels like this could have been smaller. Um, when I went with Anchor, there are a lot of competing manufacturers for uh, surge protectors like this one. Um, Anchor has its pros and cons. I like them because they typically make good USB chargers, and I've resisted buying AC equipment with a uh, low voltage power supply inside, partly because standards for things like USB change all the time. This is already somewhat obsoleted by USB type C, but we have enough USB type A cables around the house that we can make use of these USB ports in the interim. And uh, these will mean that, you know, using these ports to charge something like an iPad means we don't have to have the power brick taking up one of the AC outlets. So this is going into the networking cabinet uh, where the router, the modem, the iPad, etc. plug in. And hopefully these USB ports will free up some outlets. Um, it's nice that it's a surge protector. That wasn't super critical to me. We're in California, so there's not thunderstorms very often. There could be little blips in the power lines, but um, it's not too concerning to me, especially because basically all of our devices are, uh, you know, they have like uh, their own protection at the input on the AC side. They all have low voltage DC regulators inside them. They could be damaged by a surge, but I think it's, uh, they're not as delicate as things used to be. So this one is rated to five, 500 volts and it says on the back. So it's 500 volts between each of each pair of lines. So line in neutral, line in ground and neutral and ground. And uh, that means it has three sets of surge protectors in it. And I've never had one of these apart, so it's interesting to see how they work. Um, so let's take it apart and see what's going on inside. I've already cheated a little and taken out the screws. You don't have to look or watch me take them apart just because it's kind of slow and tedious. One thing to note is that this power strip clearly is not designed to be taken apart by fools like me because it has uh, tri-wing fasteners in it. And my iFixit screwdriver kit happens to have a tri-wing driver that fits these, but it's a little on the small side, but it still works to open this. Um, so you might not have the driver to open this, and the idea is that there are no user serviceable parts in here, but um, that won't stop us from opening it. So once you take out the screws, the front cover just lifts off, or used to, and we can see inside. So this is cool because it actually looks like they're marketing images of the inside. There's these bus bars. Um, some circuitry up here that doesn't look quite like the picture. This is decidedly less beautiful. And we have the USB charging circuitry down here. And the inside of the shell, you can see this looks like, uh, I don't know if it has a marking on the type of plastic. I don't see anything. Uh, this feels, I'm not sure what kind of plastic this is. Probably ABS. Um, you can see some mold marks in here in the light reflecting off of here. Mold's been fixed up a few times. Some scratches where people have sanded it and worked on it. Um, it's cool to see that all the sort of work marks on the inside of the, the mold end up beautifully reproduced in this plastic. It shows how plastic can take such tiny details. The outside is a matte finish. It's very pleasing, uh, nice white. And this is notable partly because the, the USB chargers are notable because they're uh, power IQ, which means that in theory they'll charge things more quickly. So. Um, I think this means it's, this is a Qualcomm quick charge compatible charger. I'm not exactly sure if that means what that means. We should check. So, um, inside here, things look like you'd probably expect. Um, I've never seen the inside of a power strip, but, uh, I think it's pretty cool how they've used this sort of thin sheet metal for the contacts. We can see the ground bars, ground bus bars, and then we have alternating line and neutral. Um, and I did already take out the cable strain relief uh, bridge piece that was across the cable here. So one thing I really like about this power strip is that it has a beefy uh, power cable. And we can see on the side here what gauge it is. It says it is rated to 300 volts and it's 14 wire gauge. So this is a thick cable. 
it has lots of insulation and then each of the conductors is conveniently color coded according to the american standards so um we have a green earth line and then black hot and white neutral the circuit boards are labeled nicely um they call out neutral line and um ground and or earth and everything's pretty clean in here um there's a lot of empty space and this circuit board is giant i know part of that is because of current capacity on the traces on the back of this board i'm not going to take it out because it's kind of sandwiched in here by all these conductors and i don't want to stress them too much but the back of this board has the power carrying traces coated with solder so they do get a little extra current capacity from that solder is not the best conductor but it does make the traces a little beefier and uh, it might also help reduce the kind of fractures or um, other failure modes of, of the traces like if they're carrying a lot of heat they uh, are prone to delaminate or something like that but this should never be carrying that much heat so it's got beefy traces on the back and then we have these little heat shrunk um, surge protecting units there's one for each of the pairs of wires i mentioned earlier so earth and neutral earth and hot and then hot and neutral each of them is rated to 500 volts as it says on the back and each of these is um some it's three metal oxide varistors um so they're semiconductor parts that increase in resistance at uh, lower voltages but then conduct at higher voltages so basically they'll open up if the voltage gets too high they dump the current to earth and then they close again and i suspect that the fuses in here are thermal fuses and they're resettable because they've applied thermal compound to the sides of the metal oxide varistors and on top of the fuse and there's no provision here to replace the fuse so hopefully the fuse will cool down and the unit will just come back alive. It does have this switch, the typical power switch um, for a surge protector that's the like red uh, neon switch. And I'm not sure if this one lights up, but you won't be able to see it if it does because of this black cover. And then we have two LEDs, power and protected. I haven't looked at how the LEDs work, but I suspect that uh, the protected light would have something to do with whether these um, varistors are conducting. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. So, um, the bus bars go through the length of the power strip. They look nice. I think this is just a typical, um, power strip configuration. I am not sure if these parts are widely available. It's interesting that, um, the outlets orientations are three different orientations in here. So these bus bars have to, um, alternate in their design. And this looks pretty custom. Um, little metal pieces in here. The wires look like they might be welded. Can't quite tell. Mm -hmm. mm, looks like there's a little solder in there. Not exactly sure how these would usually be attached, but obviously this uh, sheet metal has a high heat sinking capacity. So you got to solder it on with something pretty beefy or weld it on. Um, and then the part I was really interested in down here, the USB charger. I'm really generally opposed to uh, buying AC, like wiring components. I'm especially opposed to having uh, low voltage electronics in the house's AC system, like wiring them into wall plates, like wall outlets or light switches or something like that, table lamps, just because uh, typically chargers burn out, um, especially the ones that you get from no-name manufacturers. So you have to be careful about which charger you're buying along with your AC device. And in lamps, things like that, you can't know how good they are. Um, you don't want them to be dumping uh, AC to the output by accident. That could kill you. And you also don't want them to be putting out just like pulse DC, really choppy regulation. So you want this to be a good USB charger, as good as you would use for your phone if you were plugging it into the wall and because it's essentially wired to the wall all the time. So um, the brand name might help here. Um, you just wanna make sure that this is a beefy charger, uh, especially if you're gonna be stuck with it with, for the lifetime of this device. And power strips can last a long time. That doesn't, you know, this being high quality doesn't uh, reduce the risk of these going, becoming obsolete. Like the USB type A is on the way out. It's gonna be around for quite a while because we have millions of USB type A devices in the world right now. We have a ton of cables left but uh, Type-C is on the way in, so these might eventually, you know, in newer devices like this one, these will be Type-C ports. You can already buy something like that pretty easily, but um, this is an older design. I think the board indicates it's a 2008 revision, um, and they might have revised it 
like they can, oh, this one says 2017 on the USB charger. So this thing's been kicking around for a while. I don't know, they might've reskinned the outside, but the fundamental electronics aren't too exciting, which is what you would hope for. This should be a commodity, um, it should be tried and true design. So I do love how the conductors all have the correct color of insulation. That's a nice attention to detail. They could have made these all the same, but they didn't. Um, I like the way everything's laid out in here. Like I said, there's a lot of extra dead space, which would have been nice to consolidate a little bit, but uh, it's good to err on the side of safety. Um, all of the conductors are separated from each other by these nice tall plastic walls. Um, the bus bars are tucked in there. And then the USB, this is obviously low voltage, like you're gonna plug it into your metal bodied cell phone and hold the phone to your face. So you want the USB chargers to be um, really well isolated from the uh, mains voltage. So let me get a little screwdriver here so I can pry this because it's stuck again. Um, I've already taken all the screws out of this power strip, but uh, there are little plastic posts that things sit on. So you can use a screwdriver to pry these boards out. This is a cute little USB breakout board, three surface mount USB type A receptacles. And clearly this has no data uh, capacity. You know, it has just the, uh, the two power inputs. There are little integrated circuits on the back and I have to wonder if those are for negotiating the power capacity with iPhones or other devices that are picky about their chargers. Um, if this is a Qualcomm quick charge kind of thing, I'm not actually, that wouldn't really make sense to me because um, quick charge involves switching the voltage of the supply to between five, nine and 12 volts and in order to charge at a higher rate. And this is only two supply lines. And I believe this says five volt, 3.1 amps. So. Um, I think Anchor is using their um, sort of power IQ marketing image, this little icon, to mean it's a capable charger. This says total max 5 volts, 3.1 amps. Um, but this isn't like any kind of power delivery or a special quick charge port. This is just a USB port that should be able to put out a lot of current. So something to note, like it's not going to quick charge um, an iPad like a dedicated quick charge charger would. Okay, and then we have the USB power supply board. This is a nice looking board. Um, the chip inside, there's this IC little, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. So we have a little DIP8 integrated circuit um, nestled down in there, and that is a PN8386. I found a data sheet online that says it's made by a company called Chip Own, um, which I've never heard of. And it's the short description is ultra low standby power quasi-resonant primary side feedback AC-DC converter. So this is an AC-DC conversion chip that's feeding into this um, little transformer, presumably. And uh, let's see, so it has low standby power, which is great. And then we have, um, it's on the primary side. So we have the, um, if we look at the back of this board, we can see that the pinout of this chip, oops, uh, one half of the chip, the half that's all bridged together is going to the um, the primary of this little transformer. So that's called that's the switch side. The rest is uh, voltage in, ground, and feedback, um, and control. So um, this little chip is seems pretty cheap. I haven't actually found the the data sheet's mostly in Chinese, so I'm not exactly sure of all the details. But it looks like it's rated for uh, about forty volts. See VDD up to 40 volts. So I'm curious if there's something stepping down the voltage before that guy. Mm. So another thing I see here is on the back, we have something labeled BD1, so maybe bridge diode one, and it has a plus and minus uh, label on the output. So this could be a little diode rectifier, bridge, uh, full wave rectifier, and that would kind of drive with all this other circuitry. We have an inductor, some capacitors, rectifier, so then we get rectified DC, filling these capacitors over here. And based on the configuration of this chip, maybe these capacitors, they might be, uh, let's see, they're rated to 400 volts. So I suspect these are being, oops, charged up to uh, mains voltage. And then we would get, uh, use the chip to, to um, regulate the input to this little transformer. Let's see here. Hmm. Interesting. 
another thing to think about, so I'm not exactly sure how this would work because, so I'm noticing that they're, I'm just looking at this, the bottom of this board. Normally you would separate the uh, high and low voltage sides of the PCB, ideally with a routed channel to prevent them from shorting at all in case there was something on the board that was slightly conductive. I don't really see any major separation between high and low voltage sides here, um, which can be fine, but something to note. And let's see if we can follow this through. Got some capacitors. We have a, maybe a big resistor in there. A little tricky to see. My lighting's not great right now. And then we have, let's see here. Some big traces out here on the output. So yeah, I'm gonna suspect that this side is low voltage, like regulation circuitry. And then we have, uh, we're just feeding this transformer, step down transformer. So uh, I could be wrong on that. Um, it does look well done. Like it's, there's nothing particularly worrisome in here. I like the fact that they've uh, coated the, or um, covered the connections with the sort of epoxy. Um, that's great because it means, it just provides a little extra strain relief. Um, means that when I'm poking around in here, I'm not gonna uh, break off some of the conductors. Um, it also means that if this is subject to vibrations, it'll be pretty uh, resilient. So um, I think I feel good about plugging USB devices into this thing. Um, it'd be interesting to check the output voltage. I'm not gonna turn it on while it's, or, or even plug it in while it's um, open like this, just because I'm very afraid of mains voltage. It's, I've been shocked, I don't wanna get shocked again, but, um, yeah, we can box it back up. Interesting to see the inside. It's a very simple device. And the surge protection, it turns out, is just uh, shunting extra voltage until, you know, shunting that current to ground until the voltage comes back down. So this is clever, very cheap to produce. Um, cute that they have a USB power supply in here. But again, I think they could have reduced the, the size of this thing quite a bit. Like there's a bunch of dead space at the bottom here. These things could have been stacked on top of each other potentially. Um, I would like to see maybe, I mean, this board looks like it could be significantly smaller, but I do like the mechanical strain relief on the cord. You're not going to be able to yank that out of there. Um, and overall, it's tough. It gets the job done. It's a little on the pricey side. I think this one was about $30, which I'm willing to spend you know a little more if it has a good uh, USB charger inside because it's the one you're going to be stuck with. But, um, you know, $30 worth of uh, bus bars for outlet terminals is that would get you a lot of outlet terminals. So, um, this stuff tends to be surprisingly pricey. Um, even like outlets to put in your home walls are, are surprisingly expensive, but you don't want to cheap out and get a, a bad one and find that it is a fire hazard or falls apart after a few uses. So it's worth, I think, spending a little extra money on something that's going to be powering 12 other electrical devices. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, Fun to take a look at this. I'm going to put it back together, but um, I'll do that off, off camera. So um, I'll see y'all again soon.